here you're going to go i can't believe this i can't believe this okay who wrote the law of moses with all its commandments such as the punishment for adultery yahweh god how exodus 31 18 when he had finished speaking with him on mount sinai he gave moses the two tablets of the testimony tablets of stone written by the finger of god man why like this man Deuteronomy 9, 10. And Yahweh gave me the two tablets of stone written by the finger of God. Who wrote all the commandments of Moses, such as punishment for adultery? God, Yahweh. How? By the finger of God. And on them were all the words which Yahweh had spoken with you at the mountain from the midst of the fire and the end of the assembly. What is the punishment for adulterers? Leviticus 20, 10. If there is a man who commits adultery with another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer and the adulterer shall surely be put to death. Now notice, you got to bring both the adulterer and adulteress and put them to death. You don't just bring one guilty party. You got to bring them both. Now watch. Keep in mind that at the time of Jesus, the Jews could not inflict capital punishment. They had no right to put people to death because they're under Roman rule. And if they took the law into their hands, they would be killed. Keep that in mind. That means at the time of Jesus, if you caught people commit adultery, you cannot kill them because you're under Roman rule. Keep this in mind. Now, remember what you just read. The punishment is to take both the adulterer and adulteress and put them to death. These are the laws that God wrote with his finger. By the finger of God, Deuteronomy 9 10 and Exodus 31 18, written by the finger of God. Now, do you want to see John showing you Jesus' claim to the Almighty God, Yahweh, the God of Israel? If you have eyes to see and see what the scripture says, all right. Now, John 7 53 8 11, the pericope adultery, woman caught in adultery. Remember what the law said? If she's caught in adultery, they know the man. She committed adultery with. So they're supposed to bring both of them. We're going to go deep. Don't be distracted. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came again into the temple. And all the people were coming to him. And he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. And having set her in the center of the court. Now notice, if they caught her in adultery, they know the man, right? Notice they didn't bring the man. Notice they're already in sin. Notice they know the law. They were supposed to bring the man and the woman. If they caught her in adultery, that means they know who the man is. That means if they really believed the law, they would have brought both of them. Notice they're already in violation of the law because they bring the woman, not the man. So they're already in sin and they know it. But now watch what they're trying to do. They said to him, teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery, meaning they know the man in the very act. Now, in the law of Moses, in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. No, it commanded you to stone both the woman and the men. What then do you say? You hypocrites. The law says stone them both. If you know she committed adultery, you know the man. Where is the man? So they're already sinning against the law of Moses. And Jesus knows this. Now, remember how God gave the law to Moses with these commands. He wrote it with his finger. They were saying this to test him so that they might have evidence to accuse him. Now, let me explain to you their motive. If Jesus said, kill her, then they can go to the Roman authorities and saying, he's inciting rebellion against Rome. He's telling us to kill people even though we're forbidden. And get him in trouble. Do you understand what they're trying to do? But now watch the flip side. If he says, don't kill her. Ah, you false prophet. How dare you contradict Moses? No true prophet would contradict Moses. You see how they're trying to set him up? But they don't know who this man is. He's the God of Moses who became flesh. Because now watch what he does. Tell me if this sounds familiar. But Jesus stooped down. And with his finger wrote on the ground. You see that physical act? The Lord 
stooped down and wrote with his finger this physical act as a way of showing us who have eyes to see and ears to hear who he is. Why did you think John says he wrote on the ground with his finger? Because this is John's way of saying they're trying to test the very God who wrote this very law for Moses with his finger. And Yahweh gave me the two tablets of stone written by the finger on. You see why he did that? He gave Moses two tablets of stone written by the finger on. You see why Jesus did this? This was Jesus' way for those who have eyes to see and ears to see by the Spirit of identifying himself as the God who actually gave these commands. The very commands they're now trying to use against him. As if they know the law better than the one who gave it. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. But now, watch how deep it gets. But when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let him who's without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Now watch the second time John doesn't tell us he wrote with his finger. It says, and he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now this is significant too, but do not lose focus. The first time, we're told he wrote with his finger on the ground. Second time, that's not stated. There's a reason why. Now notice the Lord says, all right, you without sin, you be the first one to cast a stone at her. Now notice no one dared to stone her saying, well, I'm without sin to defy Christ. You know why they didn't? And said when they heard it, they began to go out one by one, begin with the older ones. And he was left alone and the woman where she was in the center of court. You know why they walked away? They were in sin, and they knew they were in sin because the law says bring the man and the woman. They only brought the woman. That's how Jesus caught them, and he would have used that against them. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hypocrites. Where's the man? Doesn't law Moses say bring the man and the woman? By not bringing the man and hiding the man, you will have sinned against the law, you hypocrites. Do you understand? They were already in sin. This is why none of them dare to stone her because they knew he would bust them and made them look stupid. But do you see the first act? Why is Jesus writing on the ground with his finger? Why is he writing on the ground with his finger? Because this is Jesus' way of saying, you know who I am? I'm the God who wrote these laws on the tablets for Moses with my finger. And now you want to use my own law against me? All right, now watch the second act and its significance but when they persisted in asking him straighten up and said let him who's without sin among you be the first to, th to throw stone at her now here he doesn't mention that jesus wrote his finger with his finger i'm going to show you why that's significant and wrote on the ground now notice they walk away embarrassed and ashamed humiliated those who hate him instead of turning to him in repentance right so when he stoops down to write on the ground, they walk away in shame, disgraced, humiliated, instead of turning to him and asking for forgiveness, right? Watch this connection. They began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones, and he was left alone. They walked away in disgrace, humiliation, instead of turning to him for repentance, and he wrote on the ground. Now watch the second connection. Jeremiah 17, 13. Watch the second connection. His enemies, disgraced and embarrassed, and walk away and abandon him instead of turning to him. Now watch here. Jeremiah 17, 13. O Yahweh, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you will be put to shame. Didn't he just shame them and humiliate them because they don't believe in him? Those who turn away on earth will be written down because they have forsaken the fountain of living water, even Yahweh. Do you see? Those who forsake Yahweh, he will put to shame. Those who turn away on the earth will be written down. Is it a coincidence that Jesus was writing on the ground, the earth, as those who were put to shame forsook him and turned away? Be careful. That doesn't mean he's writing their names. That doesn't mean he's writing their sins. That's not the point. The point is, 
that Jesus is writing on the ground with his finger and then writing on the ground. These physical acts are meant to connect him with Yahweh of Jeremiah 17, 13 and the God who wrote the law for Moses with his finger. Do you see who Jesus just made himself out to be? Not only that he wrote the law, by stooping to the ground and writing on the earth, after shaming his enemies who forsake him, he was showing that he is Yahweh, the fountain of living water.